Hardam gibi Cambridge'de event oldu. İyi e, bugün ki spikerimize Abdülbari ki oldular. Racing'den e, bize ki Judiem Kerry boladıgın e, sevetle approachle verdiler. The paragraphs, right? And you have to match the what? The headings, right? Let's try this one. For example, a lot of people when they have the passage, they start looking at the um, text, right? First, they kind of read everything, right? First, you have to go through everything, which I will explain, all right? Abdul Bari ne kurslar hakkında malumat aldım, or aynı kısa rakip kurslar hakkında ve rezin hakkında malumat aldım. Rezin de kanak kab yukarı var alışını. Oryandı o gün malumatlarımızı, bölümlerimizi ayıstı, işte tamızı bulayım. So why then everybody is not getting this nine or something in the reading? What do you guys think? Why? For example, a lot of people come to me saying that I have tried pretty much everything, right? All the Cambridge series and other ones, but still I'm stuck at like 6.5 or 7 or something, right? So why is this? What do you guys think? You know, yeah. Do you guys have the microphone for the United speaker as well? Because I don't want to give you guys this boring like lecture in the university or something, right? Let's make it a bit more interactive, right? So that we can benefit from this discussion and everything. Uh, I guess maybe their general English in um, maybe poor or maybe in a low quality. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need to improve the general English, maybe reading comprehension before they go to the IELTS. All right. I think so, so. What do you understand by comprehension then? Comprehension, um, maybe. Lexical resource, maybe the understanding the meaning of the context, may right, understand right. the right. whole idea. Whole idea? Yeah. Let's try how well you understand, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank like you. Same. Guys, look, a lot of people ask me, like, what is the key to score high in the reading passage, right? How to find all the answers correct and stuff like this. Guys, look, the reading kind of checks your, like he said, comprehension, right? So you guys all know Uzbek or something, Russian? Uzbek? All right, Uzbek, right? Are you guys familiar with the matching headings? Matching headings, yes or no? Yes? So in the matching headings, on the, let's say, the right side, you have the options, right? Like one, two, three, four, five, the options, right? And then you, as you scroll down the page, you will have the what? The paragraphs, right? And you have to match the what? The headings, right? Let's try this one. So I'm getting hot. What did I say? What did you understand? I'm getting hot. You're getting, You're getting angry? No. The weather is hot. The weather is hot? Yeah. Maybe. Others? What did you guys understand? I'm getting hot. Nobody? Miss? I'm getting hot. What did I say? Okay. Have you guys heard of this term like implied meaning? Implied meaning. Do you know this word? What is it? Nobody? Implied meaning. No. Implied meaning. So reading checks your ability to spot, work out the implied meaning in the test. Nobody? Implied meaning is, uh, I would say in Russian, namyok, right? Do you know this word? All right. And what do you think? What do we need to understand the namyok? The context. So, so what skills needed? Guys, look. Guys, look. For example, if you understand everything today, you don't really have to go through the hundreds of passages. Maybe like 50 will be enough. That's why. Pay attention, right? So if you have been to my class, don't speak a word of it, right? Let's give this a surprise. So what skills are needed to understand the namyak, implied meaning in the passage? Logic. Don't you think that everybody has logic or something? If you know that word in Uzbek, it's fine. What kind of skills are needed to understand? Concentration. Let's get back to this like typical Uzbek family, right? For example, if you talk about marriage, right? All the husbands will want their like wives to understand through their eyes or their look, right? What they want, right? This is something similar in the passage as well. So for a wife to understand what the husband wants, what kind of like skill is needed? Farasat, right? 
So if you guys have good, like high level of Farosat skills, I call them Farosat skills, right? So if you guys have this good and high level of Farosat, you can easily find the answers. Because why? You have to understand the Namiok, right? The implied meaning, right? That's it. This is, the, I would say, the key to understand and find the, let's see, answer it quickly. And this would be, um, I don't know, okay. This would be my tips for the approach of reading. For example, a lot of people, when they have the passage, they start looking at the um, text, right, first. They kind of read everything, right? But I wouldn't do this, because we have another saying in Uzbek as well, right? Shoshkankas. Right? So that is why before you start reading the text or the passage, whatever you have, look at this one. Before, let's say, reading the passage, read the title and subtitle. Do you guys have these passages? The Cambridge 15, right? Nutmeg. For example, if you first read the title and subtitle, you are sending a signal to your brain, hey, look, wake up, right? We're going to learn something about, let's say, the nutmeg, the valuable spice. So the spice kind of plant, right? So before you do something, for example, the, when you go outside, before you do what? Wash your face and hands, get dressed, right? You don't really go to the streets naked, right? All right. So this is the thing required. So first you have to read the title and subtitle. Do you guys know the word title? What is title? Name of the article or the passage or something. What is subtitle then? Can you guys see the subtitle in this passage? Because there is no any subtitle there, right? Amazing. All right, and then analyze all the questions. Um, I know that a lot of candidates, when they have the reading passage, they just like look at the question number one or two, right? And then go back to the passage and start doing them, right? But this is not the required one. First, you have to go through everything, which I will explain, all right? Whenever you have the passage, first read the title and subtitle, and then analyze all the questions. If you have like 13 in passage one, then 13 questions, all of them. You have to highlight the keywords, you have to understand the questions, right, and everything. And then you have to work with the keywords. Why do we need keywords? So a lot of people know from these like online sources what keywords are, right? So why do we need them? Save time, how? So keywords help you locate the relevant part of the passage, right? Okay. And then, I don't know what's going on with this one. So, all right. And then simplify the question. For example, you have true, false, not given, right? And then, like, the questions are, like, complicated, and you have to simplify the question for yourself. And then I'll explain that as well. And then you have to, this was my kind of, um, problem as well because I have taken the test 10 times so far. I have tried both IDP, British Council, paper based, computer based, everything. Speaking via Zoom, face to face, everything. So if you guys have any questions, you know, after the presentation, we will talk, okay? So you have to. My problem was I wasn't really basing my answers on the passage. For example, when you are pressed for time, right, you kind of make guess, right? You just guess the answers, right? But don't do this in the real test. I don't want you guys to be crying after the test, right? For example, if you want to score 7 plus in this section, you shouldn't be guessing the answers, all right? You should be basing your answers on what? On facts, on given what? The passage, right? For example, okay, I like this number 5, let's, you know, put it as an answer. I like this true, let's, okay, this is kind of standing out, right? Let's do this. All right, don't do this, all right? This is not the lottery or something, not the squid game or something, right? All right. And then you have to understand the question types. So to save time, you have to understand the question types. For example, what questions follow the order? What questions do not follow the order, right? Do you guys know the formation, miss? Do you know it? Okay, tell me. True, false, not given. Do they follow the order or not? Gap fillings. All right, matching headings. Matching information. Matching names. Yes, no, not given. Uh, multiple choice. Yes, yes. Oh, no, no, no, no, no. Yes, right? All right. Uh, this would be my... If you guys want to take a picture of this one, because I will explain, you will see the effect there, okay? If you want to take a picture of this or just copy this one. 
Because I would say this is the experience or the knowledge of seven years of my career. All right? Like I said, I have taken the test like 10 times, right? I'm taking the 11th times as well, right? And then I kind of know how, what it feels like to score like 5.5 in the reading, right? 6.5 in the reading. I know how it feels like to be stuck at like 7 or 6.5, everything. Because I have been that road. I know how it feels like. For example, I would say my kind of advantage is that I didn't really get, kind of jump to 8.5 or something in my first attempt. You know, it took me like seven years, right? With experience and everything. That's what I know how it feels like in every step. And then I will share my experience with you guys. So this would be my like tips. And then, uh, like you guys said, you guys hate reading, right? But if you guys want some sources to read, this would be the, let's say, uh, my advice. The first one, New Scientist. So the second one is like The Guardian Weekly. If you guys are that advanced, then Economist, right? So you can start with this New Scientist. I don't know, like, why this is like making this. If you guys like um, are intermediate ones, then New Scientist, okay? Uh, like Guardian and Economist is like upper intermediate and advanced level. So you can find them online, right? If you just, just Google it, you will find a lot of free magazines there, all right? Because why? For example, why, what do you think? Why people score like higher in the listening easily? Why? They listen a lot, right? So why? Why do people listen a lot and read less? Why? What is the reason behind it? Why? Reading is boring? You have to use your brain, right? Which is a difficult task to do nowadays, right? Guys, look. <laughs> People score higher in the listening. Why? Because it's effortless. You can listen to the podcast lying on your bed, right? You can listen to the podcast on your bus, right? You can listen to the podcast maybe whatever, in your dreams maybe, right? You don't really have to move or do anything. But, but when it comes to the reading part, you have to do what? You have to print. Um, let's say if you have this electronic gadgets, you have to look. You, you have to use your brain, right? You have to process the information, right? It takes time. That is why people score lower. Why? Because they read less. If you want to score like higher, then you have to read more. Uh, a lot of people say that reading like articles are really boring, right? Right? And I have never ever seen in my experience anybody who scored seven plus in the reading section of the IELTS who said, I hate reading. So if you hate reading, you cannot score like eight or eight plus. You have to love reading it, all right? Because you have to love speaking it. If you want to score like higher in the speaking portion of the IELTS. If you put a lot of hours into reading the article, you will automatically boost your general English as well because you will be like seeing the pattern and everything. Did you guys understand? The key to score high in the reading is read a lot of articles on a daily basis. Uh, for example, this new scientist is like 60 pages long, right? When I was preparing for the test, I used to finish one article in two days. It means 30 pages in one day, right? Yet you guys complain, this is boring, right? I don't want to do this one or that one, right? But you have to love reading the articles. Did you guys understand? So shall we start now? I hope this gadget um, doesn't really do this. For example, before we start, I'm going to talk about the rugged as well, and then I will, I'm going to show you guys the result of it as well, right? Because like I said, I specialize on the rocket courses, right? A lot of people like have the full course or stuff like that, right? But mainly I teach rocket. Do, have you guys heard of rocket courses? What is it? It's every day, okay. Two months, right? Two months, right? So what do you think? Is it really hard or is it really like possible to score 8, 10.5 uh, or 7 with pre-intermediate? 7 in two months with pre-intermediate. Pre-intermediate, not like intermediate. Because I have seen a lot of candidates with this intermediate level, right? They study for four months, yet they cannot score 7. Right? For example, if you do the math, right, in one group, there is only like one or two people who score seven, right? Or is it like everybody getting it? No, right? So all of you guys go through the test and everything, the reception area, right? And then they start the course, right? But why isn't everybody getting this seven in four months? Why? 
Why? Right? You guys are spending four months, right? And then like, the majority of you guys are not getting the seven or higher, right? And on the other hand, others are getting seven, seven plus eight in two months. Why? Now, I, I hate this, like, uh, the, the quote, like, you know, do not study or work hard, right? Study smart. Ask my students about the walkout. They will explain, right? <laughs> All right. Okay. Everybody is unique, right? Uh, they, uh huh. Okay, I got a lot of time, right? I don't really have to worry about it. Okay, Mr. Okay. All right. All right. Guys, look, this is how my students score like higher, like getting eight, seven plus or seven in two months, like in, in from this sometimes pre intermediate level, not even like intermediate, right? Um so this would be like the outline. You kind of learn like one thousand words just in two months, like the average one. This is like what my students do, how they're getting this eight or something. I don't know why this is just glitching. So, um, and then um, they kind of practice minimum 40 full tests and they have access to the other authentic real materials because I kind of have, let, let's say 50 or 50 plus like authentic task one, task two materials, which appeared in Uzbekistan, in Tashkent, right? So they kind of go through them all. Why? Because they stick to the reliable authentic sources, all right? And then they kind of attend mocks. I don't really, like, like insist on them going to the mock because this is optional, right? But we have our like monthly exam. And then they will receive like 100 plus articles, podcasts, right on Telegram. This is how they develop their comprehension. This is how they learn the vocab and everything. All right? So it means in 60 days, let's say, or something, right? They read more than 100 articles. Maybe like 200 if they are like hardworking or something, right? That's it. That's how they score. And then I kind of tell them about the expectation of the rocket course. For example, after successfully finishing the course, right? Look, the problem here is, like, no matter if you study the full course or the rocket one, it depends on how you study, right? So that's why I have highlighted successfully, successfully finishing the course, not just coming, right, chit-chatting, right? Finding your boyfriend or girlfriend or like having life there, social, right? Just studying there successfully. It means you have to study, you have to do all the homework and come prepared. So this would be how people are getting this seven plus, seven or eight, you know, depending on their like general English. And then mostly they score seven plus in the listening and reading sections because why? Because they work more on that sections. And these sections are relatively, what? Easy. Right? Listening and reading are easier than writing, right? than speaking. Right? That's why maybe they score like higher. But uh, my students like, focus on those areas as well. Like, they kind of score seven or higher like, in the speaking and, and, and writing as well. So this would be our like, kind of um, objective for there. And then we have our like, mock challenge. Everybody knows in my group. Like, if they score this one in the mock, I will pay for their IELTS exam. This is kind of motivation boost for them, right? So they don't just study here, they have the motivation as well. I have two motivation like types. First one, if they score this one in the mock, I will pay whenever they want. No refund, nothing. You can keep the money. But I have another one as well. If they, my students do not do the homework, they will be in the corridor. No lesson. 40 minutes in the corridor. I'll ask the words again. Another 40 minutes in the corridor, which is the total amount of one what? Less than 80 minutes, right? This is how my students are like working and training. And then now I think it's about what? We have talked like enough about the reading and everything. We will kind of do this one as well, but let's look. The results, right? So yeah, we have, what is the date here? Oh, just a minute. Can you guys see now? Can you guys look at the results? Is it like visible? Right? So listening is what? 
Nine, right? Reading? Writing? Speaking? So this is a result of the rocket students. I could have, like, let's say, displayed a lot more than that, but, like, technical issues, I don't want to waste a lot of time on it, right? So this is a result. So this guy kind of came to me with this 6.5 IELTS. This is, like, upper intermediate or something. Then you're, like, advanced level, right? Nearly. And then... Like, he didn't really finish the course because he was pressed for time and he kind of took the test and scored eight overall. But this is not just eight, right? Listening nine, reading nine, right? Not just eight, right? So this is a result of this rocket students. But now, let's just talk about the passages now, right? You have the papers, everybody? Papers? Now, let's do one passage together and I will show you how it's done, all right? If you don't have the passage, just raise your hand and they will kind of distribute all the handouts to you guys. Good evening, everybody. My name is Abdul Bori. Now I'm going to do this Cambridge 15 test one reading passage. One. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing this is to show you my approach, what I basically do when I'm doing this passages. I mean, solving all the questions. So first, before you look at the question or to read the passage, just read the title and subtitle if there is one. So today's subtitle is Nutmeg, a valuable spice. So it means we're going to learn something new about the valuable spice. So I don't know, it's kind of a biology or something. So after you have read this title, go to the questions immediately and start highlighting. First, highlight this um the instructions one word only and then highlight all the questions i mean the keywords at once from uh, question number one till 13 not only one or two questions and i will tell you why when you highlight all the questions it will help you to save your time because whenever you come across with a word that is familiar because we have this photographic memory right it is better so whenever we come across with the word we um, go back to the question and we, we locate the answers um, quickly. So, for example, let's begin our um, highlighting process. The question number one, leaves of the tree are... So, the keywords, the leaves uh, of this tree are in shape. So, the next one is surrounds the something in singular, uh, a noun surrounds the fruit and breaks open when fruit is ripe next one the third one is something is you know something in singular is used to produce uh, this nutmeg spice and the next one covering known as the arrow so guys look you don't really have to look at this white right because you have the passages right just follow whenever you see this kind of a nickname or the name just highlight this immediately because they cannot change it because it's a name so this arrow is, is used to produce okay and and bear in mind that two of us not good questions get feeling questions the answers come in order don't worry about it okay unlike matching headings matching information they come in order and a piece of advice, whenever you're dealing with this kind of questions, always start with the gap filling first. So now it's time for the true, false, not given questions. The um, keyword is Middle Ages. Uh, most Europe, be very careful with superlatives and comparative adjectives, okay? So the most Europeans knew where nutmeg was grown, okay? And this, you see this VOC, they will never change it because they cannot change it. That is a name. So VOC, world's first major trading company. So, uh, and the number seven, following. Following means after. So how do you simplify the question here, right? Guys, look, to, if you want to score like nine in the reading, you have to understand the question 100%. And to do that, you have to simplify the difficult questions, right? So following means what? After, right? Eh? Treaty? 
Name of something? No. Treaty means what? Agreement, right? Treaty means agreement. So, for example, after the agreement of Breda, you see I'm doing what? I'm remaking the question for myself to kind of better remember the question, right? So, after the agreement of Breda, blah, blah, blah, blah. You see, this is how you should be simplifying the question, all right? And then look, I'm not really doing the passage, right? I'm not looking at the passage, right? I'm just looking at the questions first. All right, let's continue. So three, after the Treaty of Breda, the Dutch took control of all the islands where Natma grew. All right. And it is time for the questions from 8 to 13. The, again, Middle Ages is our keyword. Natmeg was brought to, was brought to Europe by, okay, uh, 16th century, no, we don't need it because we don't have any questions, that's why we have to immediately move to the 17th century, uh, in which we have three questions, demand for Natmeg grew as it was believed to be effective, so it was effective against the disease known as the so whenever you're dealing with this kind of questions, always remember they introduce the disease and they tell the exact name of it. The exact name of this disease is the answer. All right, put a question number 10. Put um, something on the nutmeg to avoid it being cultivated outside the islands. So the question says they put something on this nutmeg uh, to prevent other people to cultivate it, to grow it outside the islands. Okay, finally obtain the island of finally, eventually, I don't know the keyword, synonym. Obtain, it means get, acquire, conquer uh, the island of some, uh, it should be a name of this island from the British. All right, so late 18th century. 1770 is our keyword. Whenever you see this number, Go back to this question number 12 immediately. Nutmeg plants were secretly taken to. So taken to, I don't know, kind of place, a city or a country. Uh, we will find out real soon. So the next one is 1778. This is our another keyword. Half of this half of the islands, nutmeg plantations were destroyed by A. A something. Okay, now... Now let's apply the critical thinking to this like question number 13, right? Do you guys know the word plantation? What is it? What? Plantation. Plantation is a place where peasants or people grow crops on it, right? Plantation is a special zone, the yard, the soil or something, right? And then it's saying that it was destroyed by A something. And now you have to think logically, like what can destroy the yard, the soil, the field or stuff like this, right? What? Tsunami, what? Thunder, incidents, natural catastrophe, right? Tsunami, volcano, eruption, blah, blah, blah, blah, blah, blah, right? So it means when you are dealing with the questions, you have to think logically. You have to guess the answers beforehand. This way, you will find the answers better. This way, you will make your brain work faster, right? And think critically. And now look, for example, you guys have 13 questions, right? And do you guys, how do you do this one? Now we have successfully analyzed everything, right? So how do you start now? How? How? For example, do you guys first find the answers for the questions number 1 to 4, or 5 to 7, or 8 to 13? From the beginning till the end, right? First, you guys go to the um, question number 1, and then number 2, 3, 4, right? Right? And then 5, 6, 7, right? Right? And then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? This is the worst technique, I would say, because if you just follow the order of the questions, you will waste a lot of time. A lot of time. So, like somebody said today, we have to save time, right? So, another question is, how much time do we have to spend on passage 1? How much? 50? 15? 12, 30? 13, right? 
So do you guys believe that like seven minutes, eight minutes is possible? Why? How? So if you guys keep doing this way, you will never kind of finish the passage in like 10 minutes, seven minutes or something. You will be spending, like she said, 15 minutes or like 20 minutes, right? Who can finish the passage in like 10 minutes and find all the correct answers? Nobody? All right. Guys, look. For example, look at the question number five. Keyword is? Middle Ages, right? Right? All right. Look at the question number eight. The keyword is? Middle Ages, right? It means you will find the answer for like question number five and eight in one place. Did you guys understand? For example, if you kind of do like one, two, three, four first, and five, six, seven, and then second, and eight, blah, blah, blah, blah, you, will, you have to go back and forth between the passage and question, right? Right? And you will waste a lot of time. But if you keep up with at least two or three question types from each type, for example, gap filling one or two questions, true, false, not giving one or two questions, and as one, one or two, it means you will save your time, right? For example, it means I will find the answers for the questions number five and eight in one place. You see? But if I, if I do your approach, if I just first find five, six, seven, I have to go back to, to find the eight. You see? At the same time, I'm keeping up with both question types. This is how you should be saving your time. This is another technique. Not a lot of people know this one. And this is how my students score like eight, like nine in the reading because we have what? We kind of have the video explanations and we do this in the class as well. Do you guys do this one in your IELTS courses? Right? Do you guys do this way? Did, did they kind of teach you this one to simplify the question? Really? Okay, another one. What about this video explanations? Do kind of, do kind of all the teachers send this video explanations to the group? For example, let's say you guys made this, um, did this camera 16, right? Polar bears and stuff like this, test one. Do the teacher, I mean like your teachers, right? Send the video explanations of this. No? No, yes, no. Guys, look, for example, if you want to score like higher, you have to know the mindset of the person who scored this ones, right? Right? Because you can find a lot of tips and other like, I would say crap on the internet, right? They're like nothing. They kind of give you this general information, do this one, do that one. And they say like, you don't have to know every word, right? You don't have to understand the passage, right? This is number one lie I have ever heard. Number one, you have to understand everything there. How are you expecting to score nine if you don't know the words? I will tell you my experience as well. Like, uh, I don't know when it happened, but I was doing the reading in the real exam in the IDP, CD IELTS. Um, um, and then I kind of came across with two questions, like passage two and passage three. Uh, passage two, I didn't understand the structure of the question. Like as soon as something blah, blah, blah, blah, I didn't understand. And then passage three was multiple choice, the difficult ones, right? And I didn't, under I didn't understand the word goofy or goofy or something, was it? I didn't understand. And I got 8.5 at the time. You see, if you want to score nine, you have to understand the passage 100%, at least 99%. And then you can make a guess one maybe, right? But guys, look, you have to understand every single word. People kind of, internet online tutors lie to you guys. Why? Because they need audience, right? For example, they kind of pretend to know all the secrets and stuff like this, and they kind of teach you the easy shortcuts, right? If you do this one, you don't have to learn the words. You can just work out the meaning yourself, right? It doesn't work this way. If you are aiming for nine, you have to understand everything, all right? This is for Ben 9 students, not just like 7 or 6.5 or something. If you want to find the answers, you have to understand every single word. Imagine you don't know the word plantation or you don't know the word following, right? How are you expecting to find the answer? Because you didn't understand the question. You don't know what the question is asking you, right? And how are you going to find the, quest uh, the answer for the question? How? No, right? You will make a guess again, right? Okay, I like this word, right? Let's do this one, right? No. Like I said, you have to base your answers on the real facts, okay? And then about saving time, the, this one, for example, truth was not given one question and maybe gap filling in as one question, right? This is how you keep up with like question types at the same time. If I do your approach and I have to spend like 15 minutes, like she said, but like I kind of showed my students that I kind of completed the passage like in seven minutes or something. And when I do the video explanations, I don't really memorize the answers. 
Because when you memorize the answers, you cannot explain everything. Because you know the answers, you, your brain is like lazy. Come on, you know the answers. Just, you know, yeah, take the answers and they finish the video, right? But I kind of spend like 25, 30 minutes on one explanation, like one passage. But if I do it on my own, I kind of finish it in 10 minutes. But if I explain everything, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, because I have to explain why this is the answer, why this is not the answer, right? Guys, look, if you want to score high, you have to critically think, all right? You have to ask the right questions. I will give you another, like, the phrase, all right? In Uzbek, you have to, like, tell me what you understood, okay? Shom vaqti edi, odamlar ovqatlanayotgan edilar. So, what did you understand? Shom vaqti edi, odamlar ovqatlanayotgan edilar. What did you understand? You can speak Uzbek, right? This is for the understanding of Ben 9 level. We are not pretending to be natives or something, right? We have another master class on speaking and you will be like talking, you know. right? This is Ben 5 answer, I would say. Another Ben 5 answer. We talked about what skills? Farasat skills, right? Critical thinking, right? Farasat skills. Use your Farasat skills now and tell me the answer. Critical thinking. Uh, <laughs> Dilek mana kim berjaya kildis? Sis rocket kursi ke azal mahtsis? Sis gadmi sahter kildis? Joy yok de yaptı. Ki mana kurup kalsız mana sorarız mana joy bakır orin diye yaptı. Mana zab kırk ettim. Aldaş? Tanış mı listelik? Ha yine ne mana çünse bolade düşünün. Adol ya yine de çam. Sis kare mana kursan bolas mı uşa peyti mana zab kırk ettim rocket kursi zab kırk yaptı çünün. Ah, man, I got me sat the old day man, so I could them. Crowy man, to be a man dip. Smana Horsam Bolasma, one boy missed this man. Man, I should bend five bullet, man, critical thinking. Chunusma? Says, oh, I'd she's kidding, and my god means that the joy bora came and get mad at this kidding. Chunusma? Ushama Salandi like General Motors, the Ushmeho again the president, Chutter, Ochward, the Ochward, the Hammer President Machta Turum, Boyashe, the Kate Skir, and the Maggie Bushuna Yopal called the Dishkri. Critical thinking, man, I should not call them bullet. Pessimist Bumet. Chord meaning the Korada. Namaga Usha Trutusha President Usha President. Then make a Usha problem a keep to stall and reset come again. Bola. Chintralim, Mashna, Namaga administrates, Uktu to them bar Sura Maga, Namaga joy you the app to build metro bullet. Manage critical thinking bullet. Yoki Namaga Shom Wakta, them are Okati Butter, Namaga Nomos Oxme up to bullet. Manage critical thinking bullet. Chintralim, had the Cambridge passage like Lors and Foyo. Number the passage the clean. But Yarams or Bursa self lab analysis clean, Hamanas analyzed Kabog and Nanki, Hamas was in your lap screen. For example, uh, when I kept getting the 7.5 over and over again in the reading section of the IELTS, like I got like 7.5 in the reading like four or five times, let's say, right? And I asked the question I did all the Cambridge, I did all the actual tests, I, I did all the Achieve IELTS, I did all the trainer, I did all the Cambridge guide, official guide, blah blah guide, everything. I did everything. Why am I not getting this nine? I ask the question, it's logical, right? I'm wasting a lot of money on it, right? If you just do the math, like 10 tests, like nearly $2,000, right? Uh, I'm asking the question, why? I have done everything, right? And then it turns out I wasn't learning words. I was working with the keyword technique and guessing the answers, and it wasn't working there. That is why I'm telling you. If somebody says you don't really have to understand the whole passage, this is the number one lie. You have to understand the whole passage to score nine. A lot of people, like, I mean, like, the majority of people want this easy way out, right? When they have the problem. Don't be like them. You will end up getting seven maximum. If you understand everything, why not? Imagine you have the reading passage in your own language. Would you get nine? 
See, if you learn all the words, you will get nine then. Easy, right? That is why don't look for the, I don't know, keys, methods, tactics. Yeah, there are some kind of suggestions. For example, don't do this magic hitting first. They are what? Time consuming because they never follow the order. Do the gap fillings first, they follow the order, right? Something like this. Or another like suggestion, do keep up with two different type questions, right? And you will save time. This is the suggestion, the tip, but not like secret magic formula or stuff like this, right? So passage one, how many minutes again? Not seven, okay, you know, we, you have to spend a lot of time on it. Like maybe 10, maximum maybe 12, right? What about passage two? 20, you like like 15, 20, right? You, you see the cameras, like the instructions, right? Uh, all right, passage to maximum like 16 minutes, maybe 17. For example, if you spend 13 minutes on passage one, you have 17 minutes left for passage two, right? If you spend like 10 minutes, you have another like 20 minutes for passage two. It means altogether you have to spend 30 minutes for two passages. And for another passage three, another 30 minutes. Why 30 minutes? Why passes three? The most difficult, right? That's why 30 minutes. Okay? Let's continue. We have successfully highlighted all the keywords, and I think we can just um, set a timer and we will see how long we will spend on it. Let's get started. Uh, all right, so leaves of tree are in shape. So I, I have to find the adjective uh, or a noun. I think it's mostly an adjective. So uh, the keyword is leaves in shape. Okay. Uh, they not make tree. You don't really have to read all the lines. You just have to do the skimming and scanning. We are now just scanning for the um, exact words like leaves. All right, now I see leaves and I see oval. You see, I'm not reading uh, the parts. So oval. So how long did it take to find the answer? Seconds, right? I did what? I worked with the keywords. You see, I worked with the keywords. Just seconds, maybe like four seconds, right? Something like this. It's a shape, you know? Everybody knows it, so it is the correct answer is oval. All right. Uh, what else? So, for the small yellow, we'll see flowers and fruits, so we can just highlight so that we don't have to go back to this part. Another tip when you find the answer for number one, you have to like eliminate the rest of the passage like like I did right for example the questions follow the order that's why I'm highlighting them all to not to come back there right there is no point in just starting from the beginning because I have already found the answer for number one because and it means there is nothing there right you can just um, do this one you know that's it so next one surrounds they are most likely going to use the synonym or paraphrase this, the word surround. Do you know the word, the synonym of the surround, the verb? Surround. Occupy? Cover? No. Like I said, the reading is this vocab test and Farosat skills test, right? That's it. Do you know the word surround? Okay. The synonym? Because you shouldn't be expecting that they will give you the answer that easily, right? Split, it means break it into, not surround. Surround is this way, right? You are surrounded, right? FBI, open your door, right? What? No, nothing, nobody? In case, right? So do not expect the word the surround to find in the passage. Maybe they will use the word in case, right? In case. And you have to memorize this one. For example, do you know the word, the synonym of the word, let's say, avoid? Escape isn't avoid. Get rid of, not avoid, no. Prevent, avoid, what else? What? That's it? I will tell you another like 
the mindset of Ben Nye students. So whenever they have the passage, they have like at, at least three or four synonyms all active, all active. They have, they know the other alternatives of pre delivering the same meaning with other words. So prevent, stop, avoid, deter, avert, um, hinder, what else? Something like this. What? Hamper, you see? I'm giving you like six or seven synonyms or just one word. Did you guys understand? Do you guys know the word synonym of the quality or character? Quality, character, features, parts, aspects, what else? And I will tell you this um, really good synonym which they use all the time in the real test because I have taken the test 10 times so I know what they do. So other features? Qualities, properties. Do you know those word properties? Properties means qualities, right? So they use the word properties to check your level. You see, it's all about the mind game and the word game. That's it. Let's continue. So we have to be very careful with this. Surrounds the fruit and breaks open when fruit is ripe. So when fruit is ripe, surround. Okay. The fruit is encased. Encased means surround. So the fruit is encased in a flesh husk flesh husk so the answer is husk because uh, it should be in singular noun so the husk in a flesh husk so this is a noun in singular and and if you see uh, if you read further when the food is ripe the, this husk splits into breaks into two parts two halves along a ride a running uh, the length of the fruit so this is why the correct answer is husk okay um, um, next one something is used to produce the spice something is used to produce nutmeg and discovering arrow is used to, is used to produce something okay ripple about surrounded by Latin calling called arrow I see the word arrow uh, so, as I said, they come in order. Uh, I think um, I, I, I have to go back to this. When the fruit is ripe, the husk is running the length of fruit inside a purple brown shiny seed, two or three centimeters long by about two centimeters uh, across, surrounded by a lacy red or a crimson covering and called an arrow. These are the sources, these two sources. Two spices, nutmeg and mace. The former, the former means seed. Those are, it means the seed is used to produce nutmeg. All right, and the latter means the second one, the arrow. The the uh, what else? The former being former being produced from the dried seed, and the latter from the arrow. So arrow is used for what? Mace. You see, I'm not reading everything. I'm just um. Paying attention to the keywords, and I'm just reading the only parts that are um, most likely to be the answer. Okay, that's it. In Middle Ages, if you remember, we highlighted this one in question number five, in question number eight. So let me read this. We read this again. Nutmeg was brought to Europe by. Okay, uh, in Middle Ages, most Europeans knew where this nutmeg was grown. And now there's like tip or suggestion about true, false, not given. So when is it like, is it like true, the answer? So a lot of people say that true, false, not given and yes, no, not given are the most difficult ones, right? To decide, right? So when is it true, the answer? Do you guys have pencils? Write it down. True is true. Write it down. True is true. When it is 100% match, right? True is true. When the information is 100% match. All right? False is false when? When the information is opposite or it contradicts the information, right? This is false. But yeah, everybody knows true and false. But when it comes to not given, a lot of people struggle, right? Right? So when is it like not given? 
Guys, look, I will give you one example of this true false not given, all right? I will first give you the question, and then I will tell you the relevant part of the passage myself, all right? All right. Um, let's see. Apple, easy one. Apple company, right? We know this one, right? Apple company um, is the first major one to produce all electronic gadgets in the world. This is the question. The Apple company is the first major company to produce all electronic gadgets in the world. This is the question. Now I will tell you the relevant part of the passage, right? The Apple company is the major one to produce electronic gadgets in the world. What is the answer? Uh, Why not? Because the first is general information. General information? Major. Not all gadgets and then it's not first. What do you mean all gadgets? I'm telling you. The Apple company is the first major company to produce all electronic gadgets in the world. This is the question. The passage. The Apple company is the major company to produce all electronic gadgets in the world. First. It's not right. It's first. We don't know if it's first or second. Information is different. Not given, yeah, not given is not given when you cannot decide. Because you cannot decide, you cannot know it was the first one or second one. The trick is, a lot of people think that not given is not given when there is nothing about the question, right? Not given is not given when it is 99% match. Clear? 99% match, not given. One word, the, the major one, right? First. You don't know, right, if it was the first major or second major. That's it. This is not given. A lot of people struggle with this one. And as a tip, when you cannot decide if it's the true or false or not given, this is definitely not given in 99% of the cases. All right? For example, you're struggling, right? Uh, is it like the true or like not given or the false, right? You cannot decide. Because true is 100% all easy to understand. False, 100% opposite to easy to understand, right? But, not given, you don't know, you cannot decide, right? Yes, there is some information, that is why you're doubting, right? Is it the true one or false one or not, not given one? It is 99% not given all the time. Another tip, when you're struggling, this is not given. When you cannot decide, it's not given, all right? Do not waste your time there, that's it. So, nutmeg was a highly prized and costly ingredient in European cuisine, so it, Europe, Europe, Okay, uh, was a, was used as a flavoring. Okay, medicine and well, agents throughout this period. The Arabs were the exclusive importers spices to Europe. So, exclusive means only importers. Importers means people who bring this thing to somewhere. So, Arabs were the only importers of the spice to Europe. So, Arabs were the only people who brought this spice to Europe so for this uh, the correct answer is Arabs all right they sold nutmeg for high prices to merchants based in Venice but they never the Arabs never revealed the exact location of the source of this extremely valuable commodity so this line suggests that Arabs never revealed never told anyone the exact location of the source of this extremely valuable commodity so the question in question number five in middle ages we have this middle ages in european cuisine most europeans knew where the nutmeg was grown so this line suggests that only arabs knew so the correct answer is false false okay uh let's keep reading now we have to find this voc and we have to go to the 17th century to save time. We don't have to read all the parts. Okay, VOC. I see the VOC here. Okay. So the question says VOC was the first. Look, pay attention to the first. Uh, if they mention, then this, the VOC was the first major, first and biggest company, then it's true. If they do not mention it, then, I mean, the first or second or third, it is not given. If they um, say it was the second, third, then it's false. Okay, let's read. In 16, 
1802, Dutch merchants founded the VOC, a trading corporation better known as the Dutch East India Company. By um, 1617, the VOC was the richest commercial operation in the world. So this line suggests this VOC was the, you know, the biggest, the richest trading company, but the line doesn't make it clear if it was the first, second, or the last one, or I don't know. That is why I'm thinking the correct answer is not given. Not given. Come on. Not given. Okay, keep reading. So, following the Treaty of Breda, 17th century. All right. Mm. Okay, 17th century, where is it? 17th century, full treaty of Breda. So we are done with all of them, okay. So 1770, so it is for question 12. All right, so now I think we have to read this part because the question uh, 18. So like I said, the answers come in order. All right, 17th century, Banda produced, okay, all right, uh, we have to keep reading from this part, I think. At the same time, the thousands of Europeans were dying out of plague. Plague means, uh, it's a kind of a disease, a highly contagious and deadly disease. So the disease name is plague. So at this time, the, a lot of people in Europe were dying from this plague. And we will see if they if this nutmeg was the cure for the plague. Doctors, look at this question. Demand for nutmeg growth as it was believed to be effective against the disease known as the plague. I'm pretty sure that the correct answer is plague, but let's prove, okay? A highly contagious and deadly disease. Doctors were desperate for a way to stop the spread of this disease, and they decided nutmeg held the cure. Now I'm 100% sure that the correct answer is plague okay uh, they put something on a nutmeg to um, deter prevent it from being cultivated from being grown outside the islands all right everybody wanted nutmeg and many people were willing to spare no expense to have it nutmeg bought for a few pennies in indonesia could be sold for 68,000 times its original cost of on the streets of London. The only problem was the short of supply and that is where the Dutch found their opportunity. The Banda Islands were ruled by the local sultans who insisted on maintaining a natural trading policy towards foreign powers. This allowed them to avoid uh, okay, presence of Portuguese Spanish troops on their soil but it also left them unprotected from other invaders. In 1621 the Dutch arrived uh, and took over. Once securely in control of the bandits, Dutch went to work protecting their new investment. So, so they protected the nutmeg here. I think we are coming close. They concentrated all, all nutmeg production into a few easily uh, guarded areas, uprooting and destroying any trees outside the plantation zones. So they made sure that there was no any um, trees outside the island. Anyone caught growing a nutmeg seeding uh, or carry, I think it's selling or I don't know, carrying seeds without the proper authority uh, was severely punished. In addition, all export nutmeg was covered with lime to make sure uh, they were covered with. Do you know the word lime? Do you know the word lime? If you don't know the word lime, you don't know you don't know the answer, right? Lime means what? Fruit? First of all, not fruit, it's fruit. And lime is what? Guys, look, you see, lime is the answer. And how are you expecting to find the answer without knowing the word, right? Lime is what? Famous? <laughs> lime? No, are you kidding me? Lime? Write it down. Lime means ohak. Right in Uzbek language, ohak. They kind of use this ohak, right, to wall the paints for the white, right, or trees or something, right. So if you just put this lime into this core of the tree, right, is in the liquid form, it will do what? Degrade all the cores, right? 
and you cannot have your plants anymore. You see, lime. Something like this, yeah. Lime is, yes, kind of white stone, right? Something like this. If you put it into the, the, the water, it dissolves, right? It kind of has this dye, white dye. You paint the wall with this one. Did you guys understand? And now remember, the online instructors, right? Blah, blah, experts say you don't really have to know the words, right? But how come you find the answer then if you don't know the answer, right? The word. Did you guys understand? And now, now let's quickly wrap it up, right? Let's look at the passage too. We will do it together via the video, right? And then we will finish, okay? All right, passage two. What should we do first? What should we do first? Passage two. Read the title, right? Do we have a subtitle here? No, title means what? Driverless cars, Tesla cars, right? All right, Ubers, right? All right, look at the what and then the what, what about passage? No passage? All right, now look at the questions. How many questions we have to look for? All of them, right? Okay, cool. Look at the question number 14 and tell me if they follow the order or not. Do they follow the order? Why? Matching information never follows the order, right? And now let's analyze how to understand the question 14. Reference, mention, reference, estimate, suggestion. Look at the first words of each question and eliminate them all. Cross them out. You don't need them. All right? Extra words. When you are highlighting the keywords, you have to highlight as many words as possible, right? To remember. A reference to the amount of time when car is not in use. So time, amount of time, car isn't in use. That's it. Did you understand? So we have to find one paragraph that talks about what? Amount of time? People are not using the cars, right? So one article, like one like paragraph, right? Let's say five hours a day, right? 25% of its lifetime or something, right? All right, and as a logical question, what happens when people do not use their cars? And what do they do when they are not using their car? Other things? What about the car? I'm not talking about people. <laughs> they do what to stop using their cars? I'm talking about the car. They do what first? Nothing? Charging? Charging maybe. Or? Parking, right? They park their car in the parking lot. And then the time that the park spends parked or locked in the parking lot is the answer, right? So when you don't want to use your car, when you reach your destination, you park your car, right? And then you go home and do whatever you want, right? So it means parking the car, right? This is how you should be like thinking, predicting the answer logically, right? Okay? Next one, Re mention of several advantages and driver of driverless cars, ve vehicles. You see, I'm automatically tr like translating the word vehicles into the easy one, cars, right? Driverless cars for individual road users. So what should we find, look for in the passage? Several advantages, right? The Tesla cars, right? That's it. When I find the word advantages, benefits, plus points, right? Then I, it means I'm coming close to the answer or, or I'm in the correct paragraph, right? All right, next one. 16, reference to the opportunity of choosing the most appropriate vehicle for each trip. So, keyword? Choosing most appropriate car for each trip. Choosing the most appropriate car. It means what? No car sharing. So, when do you choose... Look, look, look, look, when do you choose the most appropriate thing, car, clothes, when? When? What did you say? More cars. For example, let's say you have like 25 outfits, right? The girls have different shoes for everything, right? Bags for everything, right? Bro boys, one t-shirt, everything, right? Guys, look, you choose something when you have a lot of options, right? 
So the passage has to talk about the options. If you want this one, we have Tesla cars. If you want this one, we have uh, Mercedes or something like this. So you choose the most appropriate one when you have options, right? For example, you're going to the party, but you have only one t-shirt. Do you choose the most appropriate one? You have only one, right? You cannot choose it, right? Or if you go to the shop or something, you want to buy the, let's say, skirt, right, girls? So do you choose? Why? You choose why? Because you have money to buy them, right? You have enough money to buy the one that you want. But if you, let's say you have only like 25,000 zooms and something on discount, you don't have any more money. Will you choose still? Like $50 skirt? No, right? Because why? You don't have money. You don't have the opportunity, right? So now it means you have to look for one paragraph that talks about the options. This car, that car, this car, that car, right? Options. All right, next one. All right, an estimate of how long it will take to overcome a number of problems. So, estimate time, right? Yes, how long? Estimate time, how long to overcome problems? So, it means what I have to be looking for in the passage? Time, right? For example, years, 20 years, 25 years or something. And talking about what? Problems. Not criticizing, problems, right? For example, we need 25 years to solve this problem. So this is the what? Answer, right? All right. Next one. A suggestion that the use of driverless cars may have no effect on the number of vehicles manufactured. So? Well, for example, I should say, hey, Mr. Abdul Bori, I have participated in the rocket course, but still no change, right? No effect, right? I'm not improving. So here, for example, uh, we have, let's say, GM produces 25,000 Gentra cars each year, right? And we have brought the Tesla ones, and GM still producing 25,000 still. Something like this, right? You know what I'm doing? I'm thinking critically. I'm kind of analyzing everything there. I'm not really jumping to the passage, right? Like I said, impatient girls, no good husbands, right? All right, other questions. And then we have to do what? Questions 19 to 22. What? Okay, what should we do? First, they follow the order, right? So what should we do now? Read the instruction first. No more than two words, right? Guys, look, pay attention. If you learn this technique, you don't really have to go to your tutor all the time. What can I do? What can I do? That's why pay attention. And if you can implement this technique, like let's say in like one or two months, you will see the great success there, okay? It's not about your only knowledge here. So no more than two words. All right. The impact of driverless cars. So keyword here. Guys, look first. Yes, transport research laboratory. This is the keyword. Why? So have like, do we have people who studied or is, is, who are studying, let's say, mother tongue, right? Uzbek girls, like, world languages universities. Do we have this kind of people here? You? You study mother tongue, right? English. Amazing. You don't study mother tongue or something? Who studies? You? No. Nobody. So in Uzbek language, we have something like this, Atakli Nomlar, Joy Nomlar, Adam Nomlar, right? The names of people, the places, blah, blah, blah, blah, right? So this transfer research laboratory is something like this special name. They cannot change it. When you find this, like the relevant part, you'll easily find the answer, all right? Now let's analyze the question here. Most accidents are partly due to, due to means what? Because of, it means somebody is responsible for it, right? Most, synonym, most, many, what else? Majority of, 90%, blah, blah, blah, blah, right? Okay, we got it. Now 20, schemes, do you know the word schemes? Synonym, give me one synonym of the word schemes. Yes, schemes, do you know this word? It's not skin on the ice skate or something, right? 
schemes, give me one synonym. If you don't know the synonym, how come you, you can find the answer? You see, it's all coming back to the vocab. All the words. Anybody? Schemes? Schem? <laughs> no, no, no, no, no, no, no. Schemes, nobody? Write it down. Plans? You see, you have to simplify the question for yourself. If you don't know the word schemes, how can you find the answer? Scheme means plan or initiative. Initiative. Write it down. Initiative. Initiative. If you don't know the spelling of the word, initiative or something. Did you guys understand? This is how I do the reading. First, I read the question. I simplify the question first with easy words. All right. For example, it means they have to give one example of plan or initiative, right? Okay. Next one. And another tip. If you have this gap filling and if they divide it into separate paragraphs, remember, important thing, it means they give you the answer in another paragraph. All right? You don't have to be looking for the answers in just one paragraph. All right. According to the University of Michigan Transportation Research, this is what? Keyword, right? Mich Michigan Transportation Research Institute, keyword. Keyword here? Guys, whenever you have the number, the number is the keyword all the time. 43, this is the number, right? The keyword. And drop, do you know the word drop? Right in task one, guys. Drop, fall, plunge, decrease, right? Decline, something like this, right? Okay. And then yearly, this like 22. This would mean that the yearly synonym. Annually, right? The yearly, annually. All right, keyword. All right. So that's it. Now look at the questions 23, 24. Two benefits, right? Two benefits. And now look, like I told you guys, you should have this kind of photographic memory or something, right? Look at the question 15 and 23, 24. Look at the question 15 and 23, 24. Did you understand my namyok now? It means what? It means in just one part, you can find the answer for three questions, right? Three questions. It means three minutes saved. This is how you should be doing the reading. If it goes through them all one by one, no way, right? No way, like nine or eight, even like eight plus. So it means you will find the answers for 15, 23, 24 in one paragraph, all right? Because they all have the same what? Message, keyword, right? All right, 25. 25, 26, challenges. Challenges, problems. It means maybe 17, you see? So when you find the word, uh, the key part of the 17, you will find this 25, 26. So we have saved six minutes now. Without reading the passage, we have already saved six minutes. Yeah, it's taking time to long, really explain everything step by step. But when you do it on your own, without talking to the others, you will work a lot faster. You see, just knowing the question types and technique, we have already saved six minutes. Miss, you were talking about 50 minutes, right? So now you can do it in nine minutes. You see? Easy way. This is maybe easy way out. You guys were talking about 16 minutes, 15 minutes. Just do what? Get rid of this six minutes. You have nine minutes left. So she was going to spend 50 minutes. Now she can spend nine minutes and still find the answers. You see? This is how you should be doing the reading passages. All right? That's it. And now let's find this one, all right? Just for fun. 14. Can you guys find me answer? Find the answer, 14. So we have to look for what? P cars being parked, amount of time they're being parked or something, right? You see, I know what I'm looking for. Before I am looking at the passage, I know what I'm looking for. So find this passage. First look for like numbers, years or something and you will find the answer a lot easily. See? Yeah, you see? Easy, right? H how long did it take? Seconds? Not even a minute, right? You see, when you know what you're looking for, you spend seconds, not minutes or hours. Next one. Mention of several advantages for individual road users. Advantages now. All right, let's move on then. 
opportunity of choosing the most vehicle, appropriate vehicle for each trip, right? Options, different cars for different like trips. E? E? You see, you guys are now spending seconds, right? Not minutes. Next one. How long it will take? Years? Problems. Find years? Problems. That's it. G. You see? Seconds. Right? That's it. Seconds. All right. Next one. A suggestion, blah, blah, blah, blah. The number of cars not, not like changing, right? The answer? Not G. F? Not F, I think. D? Yeah, D, right? Because, yeah, they're talking about it, right? It, it might mean that we need to manufacture far fewer cars to meet demand. However, the number of trips being taken would probably increase, partly because of empty vehicles, blah, blah, blah, blah, blah, blah right? Or something like this, right? So did you guys see the difference now? Did you guys see the difference? Is that what you guys came for? This kind of ticks, trips, what else? Like strategies, secrets, magic pills, right? Merlin or something, right? That's it? Did you learn something new today? If you do this, you're like wasting, not, not, not like wasting, like saving like minutes. Five minutes, six minutes. It depends on your Photosat skills. If you have like 99 Pro level of Photosat skills, right? You'll save more time, right? That's it. Okay, let's finish this passage too. Just answer, like analyzing the questions, right? The passage too. Just analysis, not like finding the answers, right? Yes. All right, look, my question is, in passage three, you have multiple choice, right? So what should we do now? First, read. Okay, good one. And then? That's all? Go home, right? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Look, 27, what should we do? What should we do? Highlight the keywords? Highlight me the keyword here. So we have to read all the options, right? So right? Or are you seeing otherwise? So first we have to read the question, right? And then read all the options, right? Right. No? Why not? Guys, look, another tip, do not read the options in multiple choice because they're confusing. You will be confused. For another example for this would be, for example, you have five different like t-shirts. All of them are good. You'll spend a lot of time, right? I have to go with this one or that one or that one. But if you have only one t-shirt, right? Let's go with the best one, right? <laughs> so why? If you read all the options, they are confusing. You'll be confused. But if you just highlight the question and go to the part, right, relevant part of the passage, you will find the answer there and you will go back and do what? Do the critical thinking. Why this is the answer? Is it, is it talking about this? Yes or no, yes or no, right? And you have to eliminate the wrong options first, okay? For example, if you have four options, two of them are all the time, what? Far from being the answer, right? If you cross them out, you'll have 50-50, right? And then you will find the, the answer easily, all right? That's it. And multiple choice are, let's say, in terms of locating the answer, uh, are easier because they kind of stay in the sixth paragraph, in the first paragraph, in the second paragraph, right? Easily. All right. Next one, right? The list of... So first you have to read the names and highlight them all in the passage, right? And then you, you start, right? That's it. And if I were you guys, I would start with the what? Gap filling all the time. I do service gap filling all the time whenever I have the reading. For example, the writer's own bias. Another like logical reasoning is when you have the gap filling in the end of the passage, the answers are in the end of the passage. All right? Rule. When you have the gap fillings in the end of the, all the questions, 
The answers are in the last paragraph. Check it for yourself. The, the keyword is the writer's own bias. The bias is the keyword, right? Look at the last paragraph. That's it. I would best declare my own bias. You see? Guys, look. Yeah, you have to go through a lot of... This is the end. I'm kind of... We're coming to the end. So, yeah, you have to go through some Cambridge and other sources. But I would just stick to the Cambridge ones. That's more than enough. And then it's not about, like, how much you practice. It's about how you practice, how you analyze the mistakes and answers, right? What kind of approach you take for the individual question types, right? Which questions follow the order? Which ones do not follow the order, right? And then this... Photo set skills, saving time, and everything, right? Like you guys saw, we kind of, how, how many minutes? Six minutes, right? We saved six minutes before even looking at the passage. If you do this one, you will easily find the answers. Uh, I'm going to ask one thing. When you guys do the reading, you guys struggle? Do you really struggle to find the relevant part of the passage sometimes? No, Ben 9. Right? You guys sometimes struggle. Where is the answer? You guys spend more than, let's say, a minute, right? But now you, you spend what? Seconds? You spend seconds not to just look for the passage, just find the answer as well, all together, right? Seconds. 10 seconds maybe, 15 seconds maybe, right? So my last um, takeaway would be here. It means you have to first understand all the question, go through them all, highlight all the keywords, and work with at least two question types, not just one, two, three, four, maybe one, five, maybe one, seven, right? And then, what again? Logical thinking, critical thinking, logic, logical thinking, stuff like this, right? So this is how my students like score higher in this two months or something. Yeah, and then we have other like, um, like tips as well. For example, do you guys know the task one type before you go to the exam? For example, you're taking the test tomorrow, right? Do you guys know what kind of task one you're going to get? No? My students? They all know. They all of them know the task one time. All of them. Do you know why? Do you know how? Cheating? <laughs> If you use your brain, it's not called cheating, right? So my students score higher in the writing as well. Why? Because they know the question types before the test. Before the test. For example, this guy, stand up. <laughs> this guy took the test yesterday, right? And then he asked me, like, what are we going to have tomorrow in the task one or something, right? And what did I say? Line graph. Line graph, right? And what was it yesterday? Line graph. Line graph. And do you remember the Shalza, the, the girl who got like seven or all? I said what? Process. She got what? Process. Okay. <laughs> um, it's not free. <laughs> yeah, for example, yeah, my rocket course has some kind of advantages which other like courses do not offer, but it's not called cheating. It's using your brain and it comes <laughs> with a lot of years of experience. My students, Look, my kind of aim is we have to learn what is necessary. That's it. We don't come like learn everything in the world because two months isn't enough, right? We learn what is necessary. That's it. What is necessary. For example, in this typical full course, um, let's say groups, you guys are being taught what to do to score higher, right? Let's take speaking, right? You guys all have teachers who tell you do this and do that and you will score higher, right? Yes or no? And I tell my students not do this one and you score higher. So I, my structure is a bit different. I'll tell them not to do. That's it. For example, you guys say the word natural international, right? International colleges, natural, blah, blah, blah, right? So this is all wrong. Wrong. It's natural. It's international. So I tell them what not to do, and they will automatically score higher. For example, a lot of people say, even like instructors say, international, like um, natural or something. It's natural, international. It's not about the accent, British or American. It's all similar, the same. So I'm kind of, I kind of explain them the difference between the mindset of, let's say, um, the guys who scores plus seven. Yeah, it's taking a bit long, guys. Sorry, right? Let's kind of learn something new today, right? For example, 
you're going, you guys are going to the hair salon or something. My students know that because I can explain them in the first trial lesson. You guys are going to the hair salon or something and you want to have a haircut. Maybe you want to change the hair color, right? How would you explain? My students know this. How would you explain? Yeah, yeah, you want to change your hair color. Let's say you want to have like yellow color, right? So how would you explain? You maybe, you, how would you explain? Not you. So girls, imagine, right? You're going to the hair salon and you have to explain, right, what you want. And you want to change your hair color. What would you say? Show the picture. This is how you score 7 plus in the aisles, speaking. Show the picture of 7 plus. Example. Okay, tell me, what, how would you explain? Paint my hair yellow, right? You, do you know the word paint? Paint is used to paint the walls. So now you're telling the examiner that your hair is a wall. So I'm wall, paint me yellow. Dye, right? I want to dye my hair. So this is the like native level plus like 7.5 level. So the students learn this in my class. That's why maybe they're getting higher, right? That's it, something like this. So it means you don't really have to spend like years or four months or something to score higher. You have to learn only what's necessary. You have to know the difference between the mindset of seven and plus or below seven. For example, uh, we had this to task to topic as well, describe a foreign food uh, that you have tried when you were abroad, right? What if you have never been to abroad and you have never tried the foreign food? How would you explain? Imagine, first you see another mistake, imagine, it's imagine. Make up a story, right? For example, uh, you have this speaking IELTS assistant app, right? And the first task, like part two is like describe a time when you were not allowed to use your mobile phone, right? So what should we do there in two minutes? And we will quickly wrap it up with this one, that's it. What should we do with this one? You guys have one minute, all right? Somebody will give a talk for two minutes and we will, I will explain the, the problem and I will show the difference between seven and higher. All right, and we will finish. You guys have one minute, prepare. I will ask whoever I want, all right? One minute, describe a time when you were not allowed to use your mobile phone. One minute, start. Time is up. Give the microphone to anybody you want. Anybody. The people or the person you hate the most, maybe. That one? Okay. Yeah. Talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean, no? You don't have a tongue? Yeah. No? Okay. Give somebody who has a tongue then. Hello. Hi. Okay. No, I, I, Impress everybody. Today is your day. Tongue. Anyone? Guys? Maybe you, right? You have been to debate maybe all you? the time. I give it to this guy. I know him. This guy, this laughing one. He has been to lots of debates. So, talk. Two minutes. I've been working in oil and gas company for four years. And since, since this period, I have had several uh, business trips in all over the world. And one of the trips was very unique for me because I've been in Fergana refinery, it's in the, our country, and there there was some clauses and rules uh, which uh, has by uh, which just don't allow using my mobile phone. And in this period of time, it was necessary just to keep in touch with my colleagues. In this period of time, when I will be there. Uh, it should be two or three days when I participated in this refinery. And it was very hard, but I tried to cope with my old challenge there. Uh, one of the interesting things which I mentioned that without my mobile phone, I could uh, understand and can search the internet by my laptop, which was allowed uh, there. And 
almost I started to install some social websites or social media or other uh, programs in my laptop and I start just chatting with my colleagues and friends and parents uh, there without using any mobile phone. I understood that uh, mobile phone or smartphones is not so interesting thing because there are more interesting and more necessary thing as websites and other things in your life. And sometimes you shouldn't losing uh, in touch with your friends in everywhere when you when you are. Thank you. Guys, look, I will tell you guys the problem of this guys. For example, when you are given the part two topic, you kind of over focus on the topic. I have to talk about the phone, not like me being allowed to use the phone, right? So this is the mindset of six six point five guys. Right? When you have this kind of topic, you can talk about the other things and then just type back at the end. For example, uh, let me try this one, right? Yeah, I kind of have prepared for it as well. For example, yeah, I would like to talk about a time when I wasn't allowed to use my phone. I think it was like five years ago or something. And I used to be at this school by the time, and everybody knows that it's really hard to get into the University of Uzbeks, right? Uzbek universities. And then people, especially, study for years, right? Before the exam, they cram for it, they bury themselves in the preparation and everything. And then, you know, I was supposed to be doing all that stuff. And then it all started when we were having the family dinner. And my father asked me the question about how I was doing with my like, preparation. And I couldn't answer this one because I was doing nothing about it. And all of a sudden, my father got angry at me or antagonized and started lashing out at me. And little did I know that I would have all my electronic gadgets, including my mobile phone, taken away. And at the end of the day, I was grounded for a month with no phone, no Wi-Fi, nothing, and I had to do only studying. So yeah, I think it was like beneficial period, but because why? Because I was the first one to win the scholarship for the University of Tashkent State Law, and I, my, my father was the first one to deliver the news because I was feeling extremely happy. And now looking back it, in my past, I would say that this situation was a blessing in disguise. So you see, I'm talking about the other events but still answering the question. If you just try to just talk, like focus on one topic, you will run out of words or ideas. That's why when you have the part two topic, just talk about everything that you know, right? Making sense and then answer the question, that's it. And a lot of people say that this is off topic or blah, blah, blah, blah. Guys, look, in the speaking, there is not any right or wrong answer because in the criteria, we don't have task achievement, task response or something, okay? So this would be our like, ending moment of the presentation or the master class, whatever you guys call it, right? Thank you so much for your participation. I hope you guys learned something new, right? Bye-bye, good luck.